In this video, we cover how to derive the transfer function for the feedback control system. Our ultimate goal is to design a controller, but to do this properly, we must look at how the properties of the controller will affect the total feedback control system. To fully understand the concepts in this video, you should have some basic background in control systems. Let's start with the diagram for standard feedback control. We previously derived the transfer function for the plant system, which we call GP of S. We still need to derive the controller. For now, we will call the controller transfer function GC of S. Remember that the transfer function for the plant system and the closed loop system are different. For the closed loop feedback control system, the input is the reference voltage Y ref of S, and the output is the same as the plant output y of s. So for the closed loop transfer function, we need to find the equation for y of s over y ref of s. Let's derive the general transfer function for this closed loop system using gp as a plant transfer function and gc as a controller transfer function. If we start here at the output, we can see that y is equal to GP times U. U is equal to GC times E. GC times E. E is the error. The error is equal to Y ref minus Y. And here you come all the way back to the beginning. So here's our basic equation that defines this feedback loop. Now let's try to put it in a form of output over the input. We want y of s over y ref of s. So we'll move these different parts around. First, we'll move everything over to the left that has y. So we'll move this term over. We'll get 1 minus g, sorry, plus gp gc, this is a c here, equal to gp gc y ref. We simply need to move things around here to put it in the correct form. y over y ref is then going to be equal to g p g c over 1 plus g p g c. So here is our transfer function for the closed loop feedback system. So here's our transfer function that we just derived. This is the general equation, so you may have seen it before in setting control systems. Next, we apply the transfer system for the buck converter, which is shown here as GP. We're going to put this into our closed loop transfer function and see what our system looks like. So first, we'll move this value, substitute this value into gp. So let's do that. y over y ref. And let's just write it all out for clarity. We're going to start with gc here and write this whole thing in next to it. There's our numerator. Then we have to do the same thing at the bottom, the denominator, 1 plus gc, and we'll multiply this whole function here. Okay, now to simplify this, we want to get rid of this part in the denominator. So we multiply both the top and the bottom by this same value here. If we do that, we'll simplify our system a little bit. So we'll multiply those both out. We will get GC and then just VI over LC in the numerator. And then 1 becomes multiplied by S squared plus 1 over RC, S plus 1 over LC. And then we add 
to GC VI over L C. So this is our final transfer function for our system. We can see that it will have at least two poles because of the order here, but we need the transfer function of the controller, the GC, GC here, before we can actually calculate the poles. From the derivation, we now have the closed loop transfer function for the buck converter, where our control objective is to control the output voltage. However, our controller still needs to be chosen. Once we pick our controller, its transfer function should replace GC of S. The next step will be to pick a controller and examine the closed loop stability and dynamics.